So, so thank you very much for making such a big difference in my life. And as we go along, I'm sure you'll, you, will, you will agree that you have made a big difference, not only to me, but I think to several people. I'm glad if it's a good difference. Oh, of course it is. It's a very positive difference. And I think, you know, then how, how it can get amplified. So thank you for the work that you're doing and continue to do. And for being a, a guru to mankind in, in many ways. I was introduced to this in 2007. And a friend of mine gave it to me with a very nice little note on it. And uh, in preparation for, for, for this uh, conversation with you, I said, I must read it again. And uh, now I've realized that, you know, I have to read this at least two or three more times for me to even get a little understanding of what exactly you, were, you have intended to do in this book. It's clearly a theory of everything, although very difficult uh, for many people to understand. I have kind of got the grasp of it for various reasons. It's also because of what you have written in the book. And I've heard you speak as well about the uh, the, about how the universe is actually a cosmic mind in, of its own. Anyway. I mean, this is close to Indian philosophy. Yes, yes. How, what, how, how can I help you? What, what can I do for you? Uh, so let me do a quick introduction. I, I have also been uh, not, not as, as wide uh, in interest, etc., as you are, but... Uh, uh, for a long time, I have been accused of being too frivolous and looking at too many things and not focused in one direction like the rest of the world is. But in a sense, that gave me the opportunity to collect many, many dots. So the background that of, of this conversation is twofold. One is that basically my, I got drawn to design after a technology education, and I realized that design actually um, is something that can really make a huge difference but it has been branded more like a profession and the people use it like a competitive differentiator rather than something that can make a difference. So keeping that in mind and over the last couple of years with the COVID, the idea of bringing yoga and artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence being a little bit wider. And uh, uh, I thought I must reach out to you and check with you, you know, what are the kind of uh, views that you have? I mean, is this the right direction to take? Is this something that uh, you agree with or disagree with? In whichever way, uh, it makes a lot of sense for, me, for us to uh, discuss it and debate it because the more diverse the views, the more value there is for everybody. Well, I don't know if I can verbalize everything. I mean, it's, it's, I, I'm very intuitive. I, I write what comes to me, so. And I, I try to make it aligned with what the new sciences are telling us about the nature of, of the world. But uh, otherwise, it's, it's intuition, as Einstein said also. I mean, it's more important than rationality. It comes first. Agreed. I think that makes a huge amount of sense. So uh, very quickly, let me just cover the two or three things that I've got in my head so that after that, I can be in, in listening mode. Uh, uh, basically, this book that we are writing, uh, I'm doing a collaboration, is basically to bring the yoga and artificial intelligence together using design as a bridge between the two. Almost like, you know, if you think of uh, the prana, I'm, I know you're aware of it because I read about yes. it in, in the book. Since, since the prana is the life force that gets the mind aligned with the body or the body aligned with the mind. And that's how uh, the living being actually functions in the physical realm. With this COVID having accelerated technology and this whole fear about you know, artificial intelligence taking over the whole world, et cetera, um, I have been challenging myself to say, you know what, uh, if we can use design, and now I'm using design in a very expansive sort of way, as an equivalent of prana to bring human beings and artificial intelligence together. So that is the basic thesis of the book. And how we are trying to structure it is to say that, you know, let's try to uh, make uh, technology approachable to many, many people because everybody, especially in the context of India and, and uh, places where technology was something which was very far removed from everyday life, 
with the mobile revolution as well as uh, exponential technologies coming into play, almost everybody has a, a mobile phone and they have WhatsApp on it. And even without having any formal way of understanding technology or using it, they've been using it. However, even the best of people have this feeling that, you know, we are not tech savvy, tech is meant for technology people. So the first, first part of the book is we try to want to make te uh, technology approachable to people. Second mm -hmm. is to make people accessible to themselves because unless they understand how they are going to be working in context instead of being separate from what they, uh, the separatism that has happened in the industrial age, unless they start understanding that everything is interconnected and taking a systems view, which is another area which you have been very, very, uh, you know, you've pioneered. Uh, so we say that because yoga has remained something which is very mystical and out there and it has shlokas for communication. So typically people look at yoga more as mumbo jumbo and technology more as, as something that is real because we are, we are kind of prisoners of, our, of the five senses and we have been designed to look at the external world. So uh, how do we bring these two together? And then we talk about they should be able to use technology and co-evolve with technology rather than to take it as something that is separate from themselves. So in that context, the last part of the book, what we, what, uh, we have been doing is we have been interviewing people. And uh, at this point, I think you are the, the most uh, celebrated person that I have managed to have a, uh, an actual direct contact with. And the two questions that we are typically posing are that, you know, one, could yoga be the way of understanding the emerging reality and serve as a toolkit to co-evolve with AI and technology. So that's question number one. Question number two is just like Prana, which I already explained, can we use integral design of framework, which I've shared with you, and we can talk about it maybe in another call if, if this actually leads to that. And so that's about what I'm looking for. And so these are the two questions. I do what's coming to me, drive. I identify it as being aware of something deeper, which is an evolutionary drive, which has been expressed uh, in you know, various ways in, in, in Eastern philosophy, as evolution itself, as, as the Tao, as, as, as development, as uh, toward as a sacred level of our existence. Uh, so I believe that we have, all of us, we have this inside mystique drive or tendency, which I call actually a kind of an attractor, to use a, a systems language, an attractor toward coherence. I think it's, it's just absolutely key to be coherent with, within, with, with ourselves and with the world around us. And I think what we are trying to do with artificial intelligence and yoga is to introduce a new connection between them and between them and, and life and our existence, human existence, with the aim of making it more coherent, more understandable. I think when we are coherent, we are on the evolutionary path. We are complex systems that are evolving and if we if we aware of this drive of evolution in us, then we will evolve together and evolve in, in, in cooperation rather than fighting each other. Now, tech, uh, uh, technology it should be a, a means, a servant of this development, not something that drives us. Technology tends to go to a way and it tends to dominate so we will follow technology the way it goes. We will, technology goes on the principle as eco the economy has been going this principle for a long time. Anything that's possible, let's do it. Anything that makes money, let's undertake it. So this is this kind of a, a blind seeking of whatever there is as the aim to do. It has to give way to a deeper understanding of who we are how we are relating to the world and how this world is moving forward. What is the right way to go forward? And if we, through yoga, I think you get closer to this. I practice meditation, not specifically yoga, but I'm very sympathetic and I have many friends who do. And uh, I have a great trust and belief in it. 
I think if, if, the, if we would all listen to ourselves more and uh, hook ourselves, I think yoga is to hook ourselves to be, to be harnessed to something larger than, than ourselves. And if we can do that, then we can direct the technology. I have great trust, great belief in the power of, of, of artificial intelligence, but I don't have much belief in the wisdom of the people who develop artificial intelligence. Because to do it just anything that can be done is not necessarily doing it the right way. It's all right to have it serve, to create robots, to, to, uh, to make it easier for us to, to, to live and work, to, to make computers, to compute the, uh, the, the issues and, and allow us to condense complex statistics into simple formulas. All that is very important and, and good. But the overall direction has to come from inside, has to come from each of us, because we are the ones who are the conscious agents of this universal field, which I call the Akashic field. We are, the, the, <clears throat> we are able to know what we are doing, not only do it, but this knowing and the directing what we are doing is what's lacking in the world. If we go ahead and just do what they can do, what's able, what they are able to do, and hope that they can make a living with it, or they can make, be more, more influential, more powerful, wealthier, and all those things that are typically driving at least the Western world and the Westernized world, probably also in Asia and everywhere else. And this, I think, has to give way to a better design, if you like, a design for our life and a design for, for the progress or, and, the develop, and the direction of AI as well. So if you can help with that, I think uh, it will be a very important task that you are tackling. Nice. So uh, I have a question on this. I mean, this is a personal uh, view that I need from you. <laughs> Uh, you know, the people that we are, we talked about just now, I mean, it, we have generalized to a large extent saying that people are developing technology without being mindful about what is needed and these other interconnections. Now, the fact is that these are people that are few, according to me, that are controlling this and there's this whole command and control. And in the past, it was, it was much more possible for them to control consciousness as human consciousness because everything all the resources so to speak to be able to develop technology etc were available only to them so for example if you wanted to put a satellite out uh, into space it had to be either a government or a nasa or some big company like that now with exponential technologies becoming making technology so much more democratized and affordable and accessible do you think that uh, we will be able to influence the old mindset and these old leaders, or do you think that there would be some sort of, a, uh, you know, like the social media revolution and uh, the, uh, what was that called, the Syrian spring? Do you think that, that individuals, because of the empowerment that they've got and the accessibility they've got with technology, would that become a balancing force for human consciousness? Otherwise, it will definitely be the dystopian view that we are talking about and trying to break our heads with existing leaders. Uh, to my mind, I do not understand how that will be done because they are so used to a top-down command and control and uh, you know, the brute force kind of uh, mentality. Well, the top-down command control is being shaken today. It's shaken by the global crisis which has both the health virus component and has the, the global warming component related with the migrant problems and the, and the overall social economic situation of the, major, the majority of the human population, which is becoming more and more desperate. So the old systems are being shaken up and that is leading to a process that I've called and many of my colleagues call a bifurcation a change in the direction of our evolution. So we are, we are loosening up, we are entering a period of chaos and chaos, as you know, is also the womb of innovation. Uh, when you, everything is solidly set, you just set up the, the satellite, as you say, by NASA or by a government, and then they control it. 
then that is not innovation. That is really just applying the power that we already have to control. What is really innovation is a disruption, disruption in the system. And we have such a disruption now. What is happening now is thoroughly questioning the way the system has been operating. Gradually, we, we become, we, we, we get to suspect anyway that even the outbreak of this virus crisis has been due to faulty ways of managing ourselves, allowing our daily uh, food and nourishing in, in, intake to include elements that were before screened from us virus that have evolved elsewhere in nature was for other species. Now everything, everything is in, in, inconsiderately and without much second thinking, second thought, being, being brought together, mixed together. And we are, we are entering a situation which is becoming unstable, highly unstable, becoming chaotic. And this chaos can be the opportunity to, to create a, a, a next step in our evolution, which is moving us along this, this line of becoming coherent, becoming sensing, sensing our belongingness to each other, which quantum physics tells us is true, which all the great philosophical spiritual systems have been advocating. So this finally, I think, is coming coming through because the mechanistic Newtonian and Darwinian worldview is, is being seriously questioned. It doesn't produce results. There is a new worldview coming and people are opening up because they has, they has, there is a search for something else. And it's up to us with in the insight that we have connected to ourselves, to ourselves, to our deeper selves, to come up with the insights that could give direction to the direction to, to the movement that is getting underway. The movement toward finding a, a, a wiser, a truer way of living together, being connected to each other, evidently connected, and being so much a part of each other that what is happening to one is actually affecting and is happening also to others. This is the lesson from quantum physics and it is becoming shown to be true also in the social, ecological <clears throat> and economic field. So I think in a sense, we live in, a, in, a, in an age of disruption and impending chaos, an age of bifurcation. And that is a chance of not moving toward, uh, uh, blindly toward continuing the same way that we have been, but to move towards something else. And so that's something else that we can find ourselves in our deeper intuition is there. I think this, this tendency toward evolution, toward coherence, toward, toward belonging, uh, toward uh, cooperation is built into nature, is built into the universe. And we can, now it's becoming more aware of it because the old surface power structures are loosening up. And there's a more of a question of questioning of are they right? If not, where are we going? And that is our chance to innovate. So it's a very great chance to use our deeper sense of who we are in practice to give direction to the way this human species on earth evolves further, not as a cancer in the web of life, but as a productive force moving forward the life on earth into a greater harmony, which is instinctively there in all systems it has been removed from the human species. We have disregarded this search for harmony, but it's there in the Indian philosophy, there in the Chinese, in the Japanese philosophy, I know. And it's, it's, it's basically, and it, at its core is there in the Western tradition as well. It's been overlaid by this mechanistic thinking, search for power and, and, and influence. And I think there's a chance to have to come back. We need very much the insight that Asia brings, that your thinking is bringing to the world and to, to, to inform the design, inform artificial intelligence with this deeper sense of who we are. That is really just my thought, my contribution and my, my, my good wishes for your enterprise.
Thank you. I was on mute. I'm sorry, but uh, I think we're almost out of time. Uh, yes. One last question for you is, how can I help? You have asked me this question, how you can help me. How can I be of help uh, besides what we have talked about in regarding the book? And I hope we should we will be able to do some follow-up call again through Nora or directly. But how can I help? I would definitely like to be involved in the work that you are doing. It's fascinating, exciting, and gives me an opportunity to work with you or just have conversations with you. Well, you know, I try to put what I think is important for us to do, what I'm trying to do. I put it all into a little book, small book, or just 100 pages or so, which will be published on the, in February. But I have a manuscript already. I like to have these ideas, which are very similar to what I've been saying, to be, to be disseminated, to be known in the world. And so whatever you think you can do to, to help with that, would be important. The ideas are not for disseminating my ideas, that's not what counts. Disseminating the idea that we need to inform the larger, the deeper structures, the, the bulk of the human population, give them direction, give it direction, inform with the notion that we are together, we are in this together, and together we can do it. And this, without this, we won't be able to get past the crisis. It will be one crisis after another. So we really need an informed human population. Whatever you can do to contribute to this information is what is contributing to the goal that I have set for myself, which is not for me. It is for a better future that we could reach together. So I'll be happy to send you this manuscript and anything you can use for it. It's an updated form of the Akashic field, not explicitly about the Akashic field, but it's the same idea. It's now based on the new quantum sciences. So if you like, uh, you, can, you, can, you can use that. And perhaps one day we can also get an, an, an edition of it in India, because uh, the kind of thinking that comes from India is very, very, uh, very uh, uh, aligned with it. It's very sympathetic to this. I've had conversations on this with Dr. Karan Singh, whom, I, whom you might know, he's been a good friend for, for many years. And I believe that the, the, the basically the Hindu mindset, that it, 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 the Akashi field comes from Hindu seers anyway, that is very, very uh, in, in, an important element for developing this uh, newer mindset, the newer paradigm that we need so that we can live on, in this world, and we can live and thrive in this world. So if you like, what you can do is look at this and see which, what, what you can do to get the ideas, not this particular book, that's not the point, but to get the idea behind it, get the purpose of the book adopted and so that it will spread more in the world. <clears throat> yes, I will be more than happy. It, it will be not a pleasure, but it'll be an honor for me to actually, you know, uh, be of help. I do a lot of work in the social media space because we used to run a technology company earlier. My company is called uh, Idea Farms. It's less about ideas and more about farming. Really, really wonderful. So I will make sure that we are able to use that vehicle also to make sure that things. I've been sharing a lot of your work on uh, LinkedIn and I've been in touch with Nora as well. So as a last point, uh, I think I sent, Nora has sent you a document. I've just hold up this. I'd like to discuss this at some point with you to see how, if this makes any sense. It's a graphic that I'm trying to build up, uh, which is a combination of, of your work, the Akashic uh, understanding of the, uh, of, uh, the Hindu scripture and a format that Ken Wilber has used, you know, of the internal and external dimensions. So, so we. I think this would be a start of a very interesting, at least, collaboration between us. And please feel free. I'm so so happy and so grateful to you. Thank you so much for making the time and speaking with me. It's been a, an immense pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Lanzo. It's been really my pleasure. I'm very glad to see that you are dedicated to these ideas. You're open to that. Your contribution could be essential. So I would be very happy collaborate with you in any way I can. Thank you very much. Take care. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.